Hey, how's it going, guys? So my name is Eric Singh. Um, I'm one of the um, education coordinators. And today I'll be talking about microglia. Um, so if you've seen one of my past videos about astrocytes, um, the one that's 52 minutes long, this one won't be as long. It'll be more like a really quick, short 10, 15 minute video, just uh, for two reasons, really. Um, one is that a lot of the things that we're going to talk about from microglia also occurs in astrocytes. And just in the interest of time and not wanting to be repetitive, I will briefly gloss over them, but I won't really um, go too in depth as I did with my glia video, uh, as the astrocyte video. And the second reason is because micro, uh, research on microglial cells hasn't really been too strong until, uh, until very recently and their function physiologically and pathologically. And we're going to be talking about three different things. The, uh, the, immuno the immunological, so this is the thing that everybody knows about, right? Microglial cells would think of similar to macrophages. They're the immune system of the nervous system, which everyone knows about. We'll also talk about the physiological and also uh, the pathological states that microglial dysfunction can cause. So to answer the first question, what are microglia? Well, as, as I just said, they are the resident innate immune cell in the CNS. They're also the major inflammatory cell in the CNS. And it is a close cousin of the macrophage. And they be in similar to uh, astrocytes, they become activated in response to pathogens and injuries. So let's break this, so let's break this down. So as this is the slide that everyone should know about, right? Previously, or from the Brain Facts book, that these cells um, contribute the majority of the immune response to the nervous system and fights infections um, like bacterial, uh, viral, et cetera. And these are the cells that causes the inflammatory reactions. Now, the, if you guys remember from the astrocyte video, the astrocytes also release certain interleukins and other cytokines, which can cause inflammation, but these are the major inflammatory cells in the CNS. So the microglial cells are also a close cousin of the macrophage. And you guys should know about activation. If you guys watch the astrocyte video, um, they has a uh, selective morphological, functional, and expression uh, differences, which can uh, aid it in its immunological function. And this picture is really interesting. Let me go to the laser pointer. So this picture is very interesting because this is a histological photo of these microglial cells in action. And you see, similar to astrocytes, they have these long processes um, that can go to different neurons and synapses and really um, almost act like guards. So they will sense the environment and make sure everything's in order. So what is the difference between normal and activated microglial cells? So activation, as with the astrocyte video, it refers to the process that occurs in the microglia as a result of CNS injury or infection. And similar to astrocytes, they have changes in morphological, uh, they have uh, increased proliferation and migration to these insults as a result. And one of the main things that they're able to do is phagocytose and remove pathogens, secrete cytokines, prostaglandins, secrete uh, nitric oxide for vasodilation, and create ROS species or reactive oxygen species to kill off these invaders. Now, one thing to talk about for phagocytosis, we'll also mention it later, <clears throat> but there is in uh, diseases such as Parkinson's or Alzheimer's, uh, uh, microglial cells are actually have been shown to be beneficial in phagocytosing and removing extracellular debris, but it's actually been shown to be detrimental in removing intracellular or intraneuronal debris, such as like, it was so for example, let's say Alzheimer's disease, these microglial cells will be very good at um, removing um, these uh, beta amyloid plaques because they're extracellular, but they will be detrimental to this, to the CNS and the organism as, well as a whole when removing these tau clumps or uh, clusters because they're intracellular or intraneuronal. And when they're activated, they can also help in resolving or um, stopping the inflammatory attack through secretions of cytokines, including uh, interleukin 10. So this is a time lapse of um, a microglial phagocytosis. So this is at zero minutes, this is at 65 minutes, and this is at 100 minutes. You can't see my pictures in the way, but this is at 100 minutes. And you can see that this is the invading foreign uh, object. It could be a pathogen, it could be something else. 
um, could be um, autoimmune or so whatnot. But you see at zero minutes, it is a full bodied, has a lot of cytoplasm. It seems to be relatively healthy. However, at 65 minutes, denoted by the CL arrow, it is, it is uh, almost, you can't really identify based on the previous picture. It is, it is significantly um, drained of the cytoplasm. It doesn't look as healthy. It's very shriveled up. So as you can see, because this microglial cell, these processes have attached to it and they started releasing ROS uh, species, reactive oxygen species for to cause apoptosis, as well as other cytokines to cause inflammation um, and other processes associated with cell death through inflammation. Uh, so yeah, and then at 100 minutes, it is basically completely gone. So very interesting picture I thought I just wanted to include for you guys. Now we're gonna be talking about more of the physiological functioning of uh, these microglial cells. So are they only for defense? Well, no. So despite having hallmark roles in, in immunological states, they have physio physiological processes as well. So this includes phagocytosis of healthy neurons or neurons that, that are normal in our brain, as well as apoptosis during neural development. So these two bullet points go hand in hand. Because if you guys remember, or if you guys have read the Brain Facts book on, on uh, the developing mind, or watch your embryology video, you guys uh, should be pretty well acquainted with pruning the process of pruning back. Or in, when you're developing to reduce the amount of redundant uh, synapses, the brain will, uh, will destroy some of these redundant synapses. And uh, this along with astrocytes, but mainly microglial cells will do this function. It also has synaptic monitoring with dynamic extension and retraction of processes. So this is uh, kind of overlapping, but also has to, it's kind of overlapping to astrocytes because if you guys remember about astrocytes, it was the tripartite uh, hypothesis uh, that the astrocytes are very well, um, very integrated and acquainted with the synapses between neurons. However, in more recent data, uh, these microglial cells are also um, involved very strongly. Um, and what's, what's the thing that separates them from astrocytes is that if you guys remember from the astrocyte video, there's a lot of, there is, astrocytes stay in their one domains, right? They have a certain area that they cover and maintain homeostasis, but that's it. Whereas these microglial cells, they are very, they're free to move as they please. And through this extension and retraction of their processes through um, a moboid uh, movement, uh, cytoplasm extreme and whatnot. And this is mediated by glutamate. So it's been shown that um, when these microglial cells were given AMPA and k uh agonists, uh, they were able to uh, show that there is significantly more motility in these microglial cells and more extension and retraction processes. And it was decreased or inhibited by GABA agonists. If you guys remember, then this kind of makes sense because if you guys remember, glutamate is the excitatory uh, neurotransmitter, whereas GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. And the synaptic tripping is similar to um, phagocytosis and apoptosis, but in the adult brain. And it has different function, different regions of the brain as well. So this is what I was talking about before in talking about uh, the dynamic nature of microglia and specifically their motility, extension, and retraction of these processes. So, so as you guys can see, this green um, positive slope <clears throat> line or set of lines is the extension of certain processes to become longer. And the red negative slope lines is the negative or the retraction or the, uh, the, uh, the, yeah, the retraction of these processes. And you guys see this picture over a certain time lapse, the time lapse of about 20 minutes, the, these, neuro, these processes grew this much and shrank that much, shrank, grew a little bit, grew a little bit, uh, shrank a lot, grew some, grew some, grew some. And you can see that this is, these are the amount of branches of extension and retraction. I just wanna include this video, just to uh, this picture, just really highlight one of the main differences between the astrocytes and microglial cells, other than the main immunological function. Now, this is the microglial associated pathology, right? <clears throat> How can dysfunction of uh, the microglial cell, how can it cause injury or pathological states within the CNS? Well, one of the main things is in chronic neuropathic pain. So, um, 
for those of you who want to become clinicians in the future, um, one of the main issues with long-term recovery, is that, especially in the spine, doing spine surgery, is that a lot of these patients develop neuropathic pain that many um, <clears throat> medications and surgeries can't really solve. It's an issue with the brain. And one of the, and one of the main implicators in this disease process is actual microglial cells. So what happens is there's a very long process, but just to really um, paraphrase it, um, is activated by ATP, which can cause release of brain-derived neurotrophic factors via the P2X4 pathway. And what this does is it will change GABA transmission to become from being inhibitory to excitatory through downregulation of potassium chloride co-transporters in these neurons. And essentially what this will do is it will prevent the inhibition of pain receptors in the spinal lamina. So normally our brain processes through pain and inhibits pain or activates pain based on what's important, right? So if you guys get a small cut on your arm or something in your hand and you're playing a game of basketball, you kind of forget about it because it's not that it doesn't, it's not serious and you have a lot of adrenaline going and your brain is kind of blocking it. If you guys want to know more, it's based on the RAF nucleus, RAF nucleus and serotonergic receptors. Now, next is, um, it's also implicated in neurogenerative disorders, like I talked about earlier with Alzheimer's and the intracellular, extracellular debris uh, with tau and beta amyloids. But also in um, postmortem, uh, uh, in postmortem evidence of patients with neurogenerative disorders, it was shown that there was increased levels of immunologically active molecules, such as um, inflamm uh, inflammatory markers. So it's been shown that in dam down regulation of microglial cells has been shown to cause an upregulation of interferon responses, lysosomal genes, and lipid metabolism factors. So these three, um, these three effects of dam down, down regulation has been shown to really um, have all been implicated in uh, various neurogenerative disorders. Um, as evidenced by postmortem in cell cultures, etc. Now, I mentioned earlier about aging microglial cells um, and how they can be implicated in uh, uh, symptoms or diseases such as Parkinson's disease, wherein the, ma the main risk factor of Parkinson's disease is aging. That aging microglial cells have increased mitochondrial dysfunction, which can result in more RS production and upregulation in other pro inflammatory phenotypes. And um, so because of dysregulation of mitochondrial factors in terms of biogenesis, fusion, and fission of the mitochondrial cells, because remember, uh, there are certain hypotheses about like the endosymbiont theory that mitochondrial cells are originally from um, prokaryotes. So they divide separately from the normal cell cycle. So, and there are certain factors that allows for this, but over time, as the microglial cells get older, there is some dysfunction as some, in some genes, such as PG, uh, PCG1 alpha, et cetera, uh, BFN1. Um, and this dysfunction, because the mitochondria is important in oxidative phosphorylation and creation of ATP, this can cause this function to this very finely tuned process can cause more reactive oxygen species and other uh, radicals. And this, as a result uh, of more oxidative stress inside the microglial cell can cause uh, a phenotypic upregulation in other pro-inflammatory markers. So there's just a few of the uh, pathological processes that can occur in microglial cells. And finally, we have the references page. Um, so if you guys want to look at more into this, you guys want to lear uh, learn more about it, or if you guys, you know, just are interested to know more about it, you know, you guys can look through these sources. Um, I have specific sources through each slide. If you guys want to look at the um, the papers associated with that specific information. Um, additionally, other than looking at the papers, you guys can just email us or um, comment in the comment section down below the YouTube video, and we can check those and get back to you as soon as possible. But thank you guys. I appreciate you guys taking the time out to learn about microglial cells. I hope you guys do well on your um, exams coming up, and I will see you guys later.